Hello and uh, welcome to this new Infinite Runner engine tutorial. I'm Renaud from More Mountains and today we're going to have a look at what the 1.2 update brings to the table. So to start things off, let's have a look at the new demo scene. It's called Flight of the Albatross. It's located in your demos folder. And if you open it and press play, you'll see that you are now an albatross flying along with your albatross pals over the ocean. Um, it's uh, one of the most requested things uh, so far, having a demo from a um, back perspect perspective like uh, in games like Tempo Run and stuff like that, so um, here it is. Um, as you can see, all you have to do is avoid, avoid these big rocks. Um, it showcases one of the new features of 1.2, which is the Scenario Manager Argover. In, in details later on. Um, I'm probably gonna die at some point. As you can see, the rocks have changed. Uh, we had some small gray rocks and now we have these big uh, black walls. And I'm dead. Okay. So to go over the new stuff, um, let's have a look at the minimal sandbox scene. Uh, this scene is included in the asset so you can of course have a look at it. Uh, it's really really simple. I'm just gonna do this and move the game view here. I'm just gonna have a look at the scene view. So if you press play you'll see that uh, nothing happens except you, you've got a small, a small character here. Um, this scene is all about these inactive game objects. So um, mostly it's about spawners, but uh, there's also the, the scenario manager. Uh, so you can just you know turn them on and off and see what they do. Uh, here's the platform spawner. I think I already went over this in a previous video, but anyway, uh, this is your most basic spawner. Um, here are some of the new stuff, the, the linked spawner will uh, be used to spawn stuff and and the parts of uh, these objects are linked uh, if uh, we press play and have a look at one of these parts you will see that it has uh, these handy little uh, dots here and there and these are the places where you want uh, your next object or previous object to link. Uh, this is useful, like in this case, to have some sort of, of path uh, where all your objects are linked uh, together. And uh, of course, you can uh, just have a look at how it's built. It's really simple. Um, one of the new things I wanted to show you is the multiple object puller comparison. I had a lot of feedback. <clears throat> from users uh, complaining about uh, the lack of options when it comes to object pooling. Um, just a quick recap, object pooling is uh, at the base of the spawning of objects in the Infinite Runner engine. Um, so let's let's say you have a... I'll, I'll just take the, the simpler example. You have this platform spawner. Uh, as you can see, it's spawning stuff, spawning platforms, in a single line, and when these platforms uh, reach the yellow bounds, which are the recycle bounds of the level, they get recycled. Uh, which means, if we have a look at the hierarchy, you'll see that uh, apparently we never sp need to spawn more than 11 platforms. So these are active, and you can see that there's one that, that's graying, that's moving, um, that's because the system is recycling the platforms so you never have a ton of objects in your scene this is better of course for uh, performance whether on mobile or on desktop and it's just uh, general good practice so um, to do that you have a spawner component and you also have an object pool in this case it's a simple object pooler um, because it, we only needed one object um, but Let's have a look at something more complex. Let's say you want to spawn not 
only one type of, of platform but maybe uh, different kinds of objects. Here uh, I've set up a simple comparison between all the options you can now have in terms of multiple object pooling. So um, these are also distance spawners which means that they spawn objects based on the distance between either the spawner and the last spawned object or the distance between the last spawned object and the new one. Uh, <laughs> it may sound, sound complex but it's actually quite easy to use. The idea is that you have some sort of cannon that throwing objects and every time an object is far away enough it spawns another. That's basically all it does. Uh, you can of course define a few stuff like uh, the gap between the, uh, the objects. Uh, for, you can have objects uh, linked, stuck one to the other, or you can have more space. You can also decide uh, that you're spawning um, from one single point or a larger area. And all that needs a pool of objects. So you can have a single pool or you can have a multiple object pool. In this case it's a multiple object pool. So uh, let's say I, I, I select this one which is called multiple object pool original order sequential. We'll see uh, what it means in a moment. You'll see that it has a pool of three objects. So uh, if I just you know open this we'll see that um, there are three objects, a cloud, a rock, and a tree. Uh, these are just objects from the backwards dragon demo scene. And all these uh, spawners here are using the same sequence. So uh, uh, in our pool we have two clouds, four rocks, and six trees. Uh, I've also added a lot of information directly into the inspector, so if you have any uh, you know, doubt about anything, you choose just can have a look at it and everything should be much more easier to understand. Um, so let's let's press play and see what happens. That's that's why it's interesting. Um, I'm just gonna pause now. Okay. So um, in your multiple object pooler you can now have a few options. So you can select a pooling method which can be original order, original order sequential, random between objects, random pool size based and you can combine that with the, the fact that the pool can expand the pool of each object uh, and the fact that you can or cannot uh, pool the same object twice. Um, that's useful, you can uh, uncheck that if you don't want for example the same rock uh, to be pooled twice to avoid um, something that would look a bit too artificial. So um, I've pressed play after a few seconds of all these spawners spawning exactly the same uh, pool but with different options. So uh, for example these three first spawners have object pools that cannot expand. So obviously once um, their pool is empty they, they'll just wait for the objects to recycle and come back in the pool. So uh, for example uh, the first one was supposed to uh, pull objects in the original order sequential which means that it first pulled two clouds then four rocks then six trees. So far everything's working as expected. Um, now if we have a look at this one it's supposed to be pulling objects uh, randomly between objects, which means that each object has the same um, the same chance to be pulled, same probability, uh, which means that first it, it took a random number between uh, 0 and 2, well 1 and 3 if you want, um, and it decided it was a tree, then it started pulling another number uh, trying to decide whether it should be a cloud, a rock, or a tree, decided it was a rock, etc. etc. Of course, these pool couldn't expand, so um, once it was done, well, there was nothing more, so it just stopped. Then uh, this third one 
uh, was supposed to pull in the original order, which means that uh, it would, and it did, uh, spawn first a cloud, then a rock, then a tree, then a cloud, then a rock, then a tree, then a cloud, but the, we only had two clouds in the pool, so uh, it went straight to the rock, then the tree, then the rock, then the tree, um, but then there weren't any rocks anymore, so it just spawned the three remaining trees. Um, and here we have the random pool size based. So this is basically uh, similar to the random between objects, but here uh, the random takes into account the size. I'm just going to move this one because it's in the way. Uh, it takes into account the size of the respective pools, which means that um, when it takes its first object out of the pool, it's uh, looking at uh, an equal probability between a pool containing two clouds, four rocks, and six trees, which means that the tree have three times more chances to be pulled than the clouds. Um, in this sequence, it's not completely obvious, but uh, I'm just going to get another one. Well, it's random, so uh, I'm just out of luck, I guess. Anyway, we'll see how it works in the other ones. Um, these ones are the same thing, but they can expand, which means that they don't stop uh, once the pool is empty, they just uh, instantiate new objects whenever needed, and depending on the types they need. So uh, let's compare. Here we have the original order sequential, which means that it's going to empty uh, the pool of each object before going to the next one. So um, we can see that we do have a sequence of two clouds, then four rocks, then six trees, then two clouds, then four rocks and six trees, etc. Um, we can compare that to the original order, um, which just goes uh, one cloud, one rock, one tree, one cloud, one rock, one tree. Then we don't have any more clouds, so we go uh, one rock, one tree, one rock, one tree, and then we have the remaining trees. Uh, this is the same thing as what we've just seen, but um, now it can expand, so you, you basically have oh, an update later on. Um, we have the same thing, but it expands. Um, we also have the random between objects, so basically each item in the array has the same um, probably probability of being pulled, um, regardless the size of its pool. And finally we have the random pool size based and uh, on a longer sequence, it's more obvious that the trees have a much higher chance to get pulled than the clouds, for example. Um, all right, uh, I think this uh, new feature is really cool because, well, first of all, uh, it's been requested, so uh, here it is. Um, but it's also really cool because it will allow you to have much more control over what you spawn how you spawn it, and uh, in the end it will probably help you make uh, more fun games. The other thing I wanted to show you today was uh, the scenario manager, so I'm just gonna um, put this back where it was and show you the scenario manager. Admittedly this is not really fun, um, and it won't be really spectacular, but it's, it's also really useful. So. Um, so let's press play and you'll see what happens. Everything will happen in the console view. Um, as you can see, we have some debug logs that just pop in the console, uh, seemingly magically and out of nowhere. But it's not magical, it just comes from the scenario. Let's open this example scenario class that we have here. As you'll see, it's really simple. The goal of this scenario is to allow you to trigger certain events at certain times. Um, this one is extremely simple. It only triggers uh, test method events. Well, 
uh, don't think of it as events like in Unity events. It's just uh, methods you can pull at certain times. Um, and the way you you write your scenario is just by extending the scenario manager class. So right here we have the example scenario class just for this demo scene. And you only need to override one method, which is called scenario. And um, what you do in, in this method is um, add either time event or score event. Time events will get triggered uh, when a certain time is reached. So um, I've uh, chosen to use this syntax. So you have hours, uh, minutes, seconds, and whatever that is, milliseconds, I guess. Um, and what this scenario says is that at the one second mark, uh, it will uh, call the test method, which uh, just does a, a simple uh, log in the console. Uh, saying this event will occur after one second um, at the five second mark this event will occur fi after five seconds and at the ten second mark etc um, it also has some score events so when uh, the player reaches ten points uh, it will it will show this text and also trigger the mm event uh, called ten so uh, you can look that up in the documentation. It's uh, basically another implementation of uh, the Unity events. Just wanted to have something uh, simpler to to handle. Um, so you can also you can also use that um, in 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 complement to the scenario. And um, and when we reach uh, 150 points, uh, we have another message. So this is really simple. Uh, let's look at another example in the flight of the albatross scene. Uh, don't say. We have something called the scenario manager, and as you can see, it has a class I created especially for that game called albatross scenario. Like the other one, it extends scenario manager, but as you can see, it's a bit more complex. First of all, we have two, um, two public uh, game objects, well, distance spawners. We have the rock spawner and the wall spawners. Um, these two spawners are in our scene. Let's have a look at that. Uh, I think they are somewhere around here, yeah. So this is the rock spawner and this is the wall spawner. By default, the wall spawner is inactive, the rock spawner is active. And if we press play, you'll see that uh, the rock spawner is spawning this large uh, chunk of rocks while if I switch that off and turn that on the wall spawner is spawning well different uh, kind of large huge rocks so uh, my goal was uh, to have a way uh, to switch from one spawner to the other, one kind of object to the other, at certain times. So this is what this scenario does. Um, here, as you can see, and it's all commented, so you'll be able to uh, go over it in details later on. Uh, at the 30 second marks, uh, we switch to walls. At the one minute mark, we switch back to rocks. And at the two minute marks, uh, if the player is still alive, we switch back to walls. And there's also the launch score text method I created especially for the Albatross game, uh, which will kind of throw big um, numbers at the player whenever a certain score is reached. It doesn't serve any other purpose than uh, just demoing uh, how the thing works. Uh, and so what you want to do in your own scenario is have this um, this method, this scenario method that will override uh, the scenario manager's scenario method. But you can add anything. Uh, I suggest you add, well, maybe stuff that you want to, to plug in. Um, you want to have uh, control over your scene. So uh, in the inspector, if you if you add just public public attributes like that. You'll see that if you select your scenario manager, you'll be able to uh, drag and drop objects here. 
and and then you'll be able to control them so you can tell a rock spawner to stop spawning spawn faster spawn different objects um, you can tell your your player to die after a certain event you can tell text uh, to appear you can do basically anything this gives you a way to uh, schedule all that and um, have a, a clear way to uh, to read your scenario uh, of course in your own scenario class you're the master you can do whatever you want you can have your own methods um, it's completely open I, I think it's a nice, nice addition um, should allow you to uh, create more elaborate games um, I think that that covers pretty much uh, everything that's new in this new version uh, of course there are quite a lot of bug fixes too uh, but they are not particularly particularly interesting for a video um, so I'm just gonna leave it at that uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next update coming soon bye